Since tapos na tayo sa discussions about heat exchanger, let's move forward naman sa evaporation. Alam ko na yung evaporation is one of the most common unit operations that you've already heard. Kasi yung, um, ito kasi yung common lagi natin na um, example kapag meron tayong introduction to engineering no? evaporation. And ito rin yung isa sa pinaka lumalabas din sa board exam. Kaya um, it is very essential that you know at least how this evaporation works. And basically, yung term na evaporation is um, actually alam nyo na rin naman to kasi nung grade, ano ba kayo? grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, meron tayong water cycle, and then dun sa water cycle na yun, di ba? Ang isa dun is evaporation. So, basically, ang nangyari dun sa water cycle na yun is that yung tubig natin is marirelease siya because of the heat. So, yun yung idea na evaporation b- before. And yung evaporator natin, or evaporation as a unit operation, is not really that different. No? Um, the thing here is that if you have a certain solution, we usually want to concentrate that solution. So, um, let me highlight muna ito, no? Para alam natin yung pinag-uusapan natin. So, yung naka-highlight yun, yun yung pinag-uusapan natin. Technically, pag meron tayong solution, so, when we say solution, ito yung solid dissolve in a liquid. So, that's a solution. Uh, basta any two combinations were in um, a single phase lang yung nakikita natin. So, yun yung solution. Pagka ginawa natin is, in-expose natin siya sa heat, either by boiling or by simply heating, and then may nag-evaporate doon na liquid or any liquid na ma-release pag na-reach na yung certain boiling point, we know that it is evaporating. And then, kapag na- nauubos yung liquid doon sa solution na yon, we know na mas tumataas yung concentration ng ating mismong feed. Technically, because yung denominator natin, say for example, we have a fraction, so, di ba yung denominator natin dyan is yung total mass? So, if for example, yung total mass na yun is nababawasan kasi yung liquid dun sa total mass na yun is nababawasan. So, basically, mas tumataas na yung ating fractional concentration. And in that case, we call the outlet of that being the liquor. So, pag sinabi natin liquor, ito yung medyo concentrated na, na solution from the feed. Kaya, um, mostly... Pag nagpasok tayo ng feed sa isang evaporator, ito ay usually dilute pa. And then after that, magiging concentrated na siya. The most common examples ng ating mga um, evaporation is this one. Actually, hindi siya one. Marami siya. We have concentration of sugar solution. We have sodium chloride, sodium hydroxide, glycerol, and milk. So, um, just to give you an idea of how this sugar solution works. So, ah, di ba, meron kayong um, from, mag-start sa mga digestion dun sa fermentation process natin. And then, pag meron na kayong sugar solution, so, papasok siya dun sa feed ng ating, um, dun sa daanan, papun, dun sa feed na dadaanan ng pipe, papunta evaporator. So, mag-release ng heat or i-boil nun yung ating solution. And then, syempre, after some time, mag-evaporate na yung ating water. And then, makakuha kayo ng mass concentrated na solution. We call that the liquor. So, ganun din yung concept ng ating sodium chloride. So, basically, kung meron kayong seawater, so ganun yung ginagawa natin. Ne-evaporate natin yung tubig na nandun sa ating seawater. Okay. So, ito, yung last paragraph dito, sabi dito, hindi lang daw kasi yung ating um, unit operation na evaporation na nag include ng boiling. Yung iba rin is meron tayong distillation, crystallization, and that is true. So, malalaman nyo rito yung pinagkaiba ng bawat isa sa kanila. But just to give you an idea of how crystallization differs from evaporation, it's just that um, usually after ng evaporation, nagkikristallize naman tayo to bring down the temperature or the final temperature of the system. Kasi, um, imagine if you have concentrated a certain solution. So, we know for sure na since siya solution pa rin, we can't, uh, we can't see the solids inside of that solution. Kasi nga, solution pa siya eh. So, basically, isang phase lang yung nag appear Now, um, during crystallization, pag pinasok natin yun, yung medyo concentrated na solution na yun, and binring down pa natin yung temperature into a lower, um, in a lower um, value, malalaman natin na lalampas na siya dun sa tinatawag natin na saturation temperature. So, di ba alam naman natin na kapag ang solution is saturated, yung maximum amount na lang nung, uh, nung isang certain, um, let's say, compound 
is dissolved in that particular liquid. For example, yung saturation um, amount natin sa, uh, for example lang ha, sa sugar sa water is, mabawa, 30 grams lang. So, beyond that 30 grams, mapapansin natin na hindi na niya kayang dissolve Pero, kapag mataas yung temperature ng ating system, let's say yung um, medyo mainit yung ating um, temperature ng tubig, pag naglagay ka pa ng beyond 30 grams, we know that mas dissolve pa siya. Kasi nga, mainit eh. So, nag increase tayo ng temperature. Pero, once na ibinaba mo siya ulit dun sa kanyang normal temperature, you will know na yung, yung sugar na dissolved dun will actually come out of that solution. So, yun yung nangyayari. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng tatawag na crystals. So, yun yung pinagkaiba natin sa evaporation. Basta ang dulong feed, I mean, ang dulong product ng evaporation natin is still a solution. Wala pa tayo nabubuong crystals. So, yan. And then, we move on with the processing factors. So, ito naman processing factors na to is all about kung ano ba yung nakaka-affect sa ating process. No? So, yun, yun unang-una talaga is concentration in the liquid. Kasi alam naman natin na kailangan dilute yung pumasok dyan. Kasi if hindi, hindi natin siya kayong evaporate pa. Or pag in-evaporate natin, ang mangyayari dyan, mag-perform na tayo ng crystals, which is um, hindi naman yun yung goal ng evaporation. So, pag sinabi natin solubility, ito naman yung property ng ating mga compound kung saan madidissolve sila dun sa water. Usually, water naman yan. Now, in evaporation, we know naman na yung pumapasok lagi dito is more on dilute substances. Kasi kung hindi yung dilute, and then medyo concentrated na yan, hindi na natin yan kayang evaporate kasi concentrated na eh. And given the fact that this is evaporation, usually ito ay parang pasimula pa lang ng process eh. Kaya medyo dilute pa yung ating mga solution. Then, saka pa siya makikristallization after. So, meron ditong paragraph na nagsasabi, this may limit the maximum concentration in solution which can be obtained by evaporation. And that is true. Kasi, for example, uh, meron kayong solution dyan na medyo mataas na talaga yung concentration. So, um, hindi na actually evaporation yung kailangan nyo dyan para magkaroon kayo ng desired product. Actually, crystallization na yung kailangan nyo dyan kasi nga, we're nearing the maximum available concentration dun sa ating feed. Kaya nga, dapat dilute siya muna and then after some time, Uh, less dilute na siya pero hindi pa niya rin nare-reach yung saturation niya na concentration or kahit ma-reach na yon at least nandun na lang sa final niya na product. Okay. And then, ito naman temperature sensitivity of materials. Uh, this just talks about the different um, properties of materials in a way na uh, meron tayong mga materials na depende sa temperature kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng degradation dun sa temperature na yon. So, for example, um, hindi natin siya pwedeng ihit ng matagal kasi di ba minsan ang process evaporation matagal yan. Just to uh, low temperature pero medyo matagal just to save, um, let's say, cost. Pero may mga times na yung material natin, hindi natin pwedeng i-prolong heat kasi nga um, masisira siya. So, usually yun ay mga biological materials. So, yun lang. And then, about this foaming and frothing. So, um, let me talk about this... Um, case wherein you want to evaporate um, milk. Uh, Siyempre, yung skim milk natin, kung paano ba siya ginagawa. No? So, usually, uh, during boiling, yung um, surface level ng ating um, feed, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga froth or mga foam, which is parang bulabulang, medyo sobrang liliit nila. Na minsan, nagmumukha na siyang, ano, nagmumukha na siyang foam. Pero technically, they are bubbles na sobrang liit. Okay. So, yung cases na ganun, imagine nyo if you're boiling something. So, basically, yung bula natin mag sa sa bottom and then tataas yung vapor na yon So, when it meets yung foam dun sa ating surface, hindi siya maka-escape kasi sumasama lang siya. Nagkakaroon tayo ng adhesion dun sa ating foam. So, anong nangyayari dun, since meron na tayong um, na-perform na bubble, tapos hindi pa nag escape yung vapor natin, nagkakaroon tayo ng certain layer of resistance again dun sa top ng ating um, layer of fluid. Kaya, nangyayari is, hindi nagiging efficient yung ating evaporation. Kaya nga, during, ano, during foaming, we will know that we'll always have these entrainment losses. Kaya, it is one, ano, it is one factor na we need to consider during evaporation. So, I know there are times na merong ina-add para matanggal yung foaming, pero, Um, we're not be dealing much into this um, situation naman. Okay, and then I think the most important of all factors is are this pressure and temperature. So we know very well na mag exist lang yung ating boiling when we meet a certain pressure and temperature. That's why when we say um, 
uh, nagbo-boil na yung ating tubig, that's because it has reached uh, a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Pero, that is only true when the pressure is 1 atmosphere. So, basically, the pressure and temperature must be conditioned in a way na magmimit sila dun sa ating phase diagram para ma-achieve natin yung um, correct phase natin, which is the vapor phase. Kasi, for example, um, mataas yung temperature mo, but your pressure is kind of not 1 atm. So, you're not quite sure if you would really be able to um, evaporate this liquid. Kasi, ang ating, pre ang ating boiling is dependent also on the pressure of the system. So, kasi diba, boiling only of course when the vapor pressure is equal to the pressure at the top of that layer. So, kung halimbawa, ang pressure natin is uh, less than 1 atm and then na-reach mo siya dun. So, technically, yung temperature natin, pwedeng hindi umabot ng, ng 100 degrees Celsius pero mag-boil na siya. It is also the same as when you boil a certain water in a kettle. Diba, uh, sabi lagi natin magulang ay takpan para mabilis kumulo. And that is true. Kasi nangyayari, pag tinakpan natin yung ating um, kettle, we know na yung ating pressure dun sa ati, sa loob ng ating kettle ay nare-reduce. Kasi ba diba, kung, kung open siya, we know that it is exposed to atmospheric pressure. So that's an additional 1 atm. But if you close that, we know naman na mas mabawasan siya. And technically, pag nabawasan yon yung ating vapor pressure dun sa loob is mas madali niyang mare-reach yung equilibrium um, pressure dun sa ating atmosphere. So, Kaya, yun yung idea kung bakit pag tinakloban nyo, mabilis kukulo. Pag, pag um, tinanggal taklob, mga wala na yung kulo. Kasi, yung vapor pressure natin is hindi niya namimit yung kanyang equilibrium pressure dun sa directly above its uh, liquid phase. And, yung temperature din natin is malaking factor. So, so kung halimbawa, masyado ng mataas yung temperature, so takpan nyo yan or buksan nyo, um, yung temperature na yung nagiging driving force para um, ma-reach natin yung above boiling point na sinasabi natin. Okay. So, um, I would also like to talk something about this boiling point elevation. Now, um, yung boiling point elevation, alam naman natin na this is one of the properties of ionic compounds na during our high school days, uh, ito lagi yung mga samasamang colligative properties like the boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, so meron pa yung mga osmotic pressure, something like that. So, um, this is very important when we talk about evaporation. Kasi alam naman natin na kinoconcentrate natin sometimes ay mga ionic compounds like sodium chloride. So, in that way, kapag medyo mataas na yung concentration during the ano, evaporation, we know naman na this will increase its boiling point. So, halimbawa, yung system natin for water lang is 100 degrees Celsius, but when you add this sodium chloride, di ba, mag increase na siya. So, basically, hindi magbo-boil yung ating um, system sa 100 degrees Celsius because may mga ions na nakadissolve dun sa ating um, uh, salt solution. So, increase siya. So, siguro isipin nyo is, edi para makompute yun, sir, gagamit tayo ng tinatawag na a formula doon yung may mga ebulioscopic constant and then yun nga then just multiply it with the molality and then yung ating Van Hoff factor so um, that is only true when you have a certain um, limited amount ng isang solution and then the temperature and pressure are just a uh, normal temperature yun yung ginagawa natin that's a typical solution but this is evaporation this is a process wherein you have to account all the changes that happens during the start of evaporation until the end of this evaporation so with that uh, we'll not be using that kind of equation kasi dun lang siya uh, applicable dun sa mga systems na um, yun nga yung simpleng system lang na uh, usually we can uh, we can see them on a real life basis na systems pero pag sinabi natin evaporation this is quite a different story and I will be explaining more on that pag nag-solve na ako ng problem on how we use Perry's Handbook in determining the the boiling point elevation. So, and the last one would be this scale deposition and materials of construction. So, um, this just talks about the idea naman na ang lahat nating materials ay nagkakaroon ng scale during process. So, the scale formation will reduce the efficiency. That's why whenever you whenever you've uh, operated some quite some time, alam naman natin na kailangan natin i-maintain yung ating equipment. So, nagkakaroon na maintain na sinatanggal yung mga scales, yung mga, tinatawag yung descaling. So, ayun. And then, yung materials of construction is very important kasi alam naman natin na during preliminary, di ba, na pag-usapan natin yung tungkol sa overall heat transfer coefficient. Na depende yon sa 
thermal conductivity ng ating material. That's why the materials of construction should always be um it should always be considered when choosing the feed that you would evaporate kasi or vice versa kung halimbawa mayroon kayong certain feed or gusto niyo mag-produce ng gatong product syempre yung inyong material of construction should um always be um inert or parang wala siyang reaction dun sa inyong feed okay so ito naman itong mga general types of evaporators ito ay um ililive ko na sa inyo para basahin the reason is that um unlike sa heat exchangers um, ito kasing ating evaporators ay magkakaiba sila ng itsura minsan um, nag-start tayo sa baba sa taas pero the operation is just the same they will just have this feed and then mag-evaporate and then may liquor so ganun lang siya kaya um, I'll just leave this to you para basahin nyo and then um, I'll just uh, use yung ating general equation na lagi sa ating evaporators kasi they are just almost the same now, ito methods of operation naman is I'll be discussing all about this during um, exa ah, during exam during uh, yung ating example problems. Okay? And of course, this boiling point elevation. So, this material balance and enthalpy balance, I'll be um, deriving all of this again sa ano na lang, sa problem solving. So, almost itong padulo na is all about ano na yan, mga ways on how we solve for um, evaporators. So, basically, ano na lang yan. Sa problem solving, yun na lang yan makikita. Okay, so yun na lang yung ating um, short or very quick discussion about evaporators. It's just that uh, this evaporation happens when we have a dilute solution and you would want to remove water from that at a point wherein yung ating liquor is hindi siya uh, hindi niya marireach yung maximum concentration dun sa ating outlet. Okay? And if it, and if you want to um, concentrate it further na sobrang konti na lang ng water, evaporation is not really the uh, method that you want to be using, but crystallization. So, yun yung ating general um, concept on how we uh, solve for evaporation and how we view evaporation. Okay?